Hammerhead versus Polaris. Which one looks like the better idea? If you don't know, we started this debate on Friday. I was interested to read a lot of the comments. And I, I believe I did hint at the fact that I kind of felt that this was something that was better dealt with in its own episode or something that required a lot more examination. So I figured I would take this opportunity to kind of look at both ships in a much more in-depth way and try to make some sense of this argument. Look at the pluses, look at the minuses, and look at the challenges facing both ships. So let's drop some facts about these two ships. Now, first of all, the Hammerhead has 24 size four guns and 28 size three missiles. The Polaris has a slightly different armament. Keep in mind that these two ships are dis uh, designed, sorry, for separate roles. The Polaris has two size five guns. They have 12 size four guns, 32 size three missiles and 28 size 10 torpedoes. Once again, these two ships are actually meant to do different duty. Now, while the Hammerhead is probably more geared towards defending larger ships against marauding fighters or other medium-sized ships, the Polaris is meant more for long-range attack roles and patrol duty. It's, you know, it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges. But there is kind of a reason to look at both these ships and kind of say, mm, which way should I spend my money? Because right now, the way the game is going and the way the game is being developed, there are some issues that may put a wrinkle in either one of these ships. And there are things that you need to be aware of because there's a lot of people because of how closely priced these two ships are with the players being roughly about $100 more. There's a lot of people out there who at one point or another probably owned one and then melted it for the other and are probably now looking back at it and thinking, hmm, was that the right decision? Now of the two ships, of course, only the Hammerhead is currently flyable and in its current state in the game right now, the Hammerhead is actually a lot of fun to fly. It's a lot of fun to play with if you've got friends and you can fill up all the turrets. It's a hell of a lot of fun and there is in the immediate future some cool aspects to it i mean currently we do have npc hammerheads in the game and i would love to get in the game in its in a more stable state currently uh the current patch is not really cooperating with that but i would like to get in the game in a much more stable state and have some hammerhead battles with these npc hammerheads and go out and do missions and explore with the ship there's a lot of cool features on the hammerhead however as we move forward in the game's development the hammerheads problems are going to become very apparent now of course you see here we have beds we have lockers for all our crew members but the lockers don't fit standard assault rifles in the game nor do they fit the space helmets that you're very much going to need because most of the entry and exit points have no airlocks so anytime someone comes in or out of the ship, you're going to evacuate the entire atmosphere of the ship. So anyone without a helmet is going to be killed. And that's not a great thing because we're talking about a game once again with permadeath. Now, another feature of Star Citizen is the fact that, unlike other MMOs, you don't have a magical bag of holding that allows you to carry all kinds of different gear and gear setups on you. Currently, you are able to pull out different armor, different weapons out of your Moby Glass magically and put them on your character. However, at some point in the future, inventories are going to become physicalized. Every gun is going to require a space, every helmet, every piece of armor, anything that you may or may not need things that you may have to bring with you and once again you have to think about the travel time across an entire star system which is very significant there's no teleports in this game so you're gonna have to bring a lot of things with you and the truth is is that the hammerhead has more storage for food than it has for weapons in fact the entire ship doesn't have a single gun rack 
apparently in this navy you keep your gun at most a pistol or a submachine gun in your foot locker along with your ammo and anything else you need except of course for your helmet which you have to keep on at all times otherwise you know you'll die so going into the future obviously there are going to be a number of issues with the hammerhead are these issues currently being looked at and are they on a schedule to be fixed we don't know because they're not really being acknowledged now you may notice as you're traveling around the universe that a number of the larger landing sites operate with a door that is up above your ship which is to say you look up there's the door it opens up it lets your ship escape or you can land down into it now the hammerhead with its down looking cockpit is actually very good for landing down into it however taking off is kind of a different story you have to radio you have to ask them to open the door and then you have to tell somebody to go sit in your top turret to tell you if the door is open or not now players asked about things like can we get remote cameras that allow us to at least see upwards and see if the door is open or not and to a certain degree currently there appears to be some kind of beginning of a remote camera with certain ships but its functionality appears to be a little bit spotty so we're gonna have to wait and see if that's something that actually manifests itself properly so that is one feature that may indeed be fixed or at least be made a little bit easier to use however in the heat of combat not being able to look above you could prove fatal now interestingly enough even though the individual flaws with a lot of these ships aren't really ever fully acknowledged in a way they tacitly are acknowledged later on when newer ships are introduced into the universe which feature fixes to these common issues with a lot of the earlier ships so in a way it kind of becomes apparent that if the ship that you're currently flying isn't going to get a fix anytime soon perhaps unless that ship is scheduled for a rework it's better to invest in a ship that already fixes most of those issues potentially and let me emphasize and underline the word potentially because it may sound like oh my god this is just you know an episode where he's just beating up on the hammerhead not so the reason why we can kind of hit the hammerhead is you know heavily as we can is because the hammerhead exists the hammerhead has the unique disadvantage of being the first one through the gate and so it usually ends up being the one that takes the hits the idris the javelin even though they are supposedly finished or very close to just don't exist in the game yet we don't have them in our hands we aren't able to explore them so we aren't able to see what's gone right and what's gone wrong with them the hammerhead unfortunately for it is the first one through the door so we do get to see a lot of those issues so we get to see the ship warts and all and so you have to remember that if you know the polaris was in the game right now we may have you know a lot more things to talk about on the negative side with the polaris but isn't that kind of the upside for the polaris is that it's not here yet so it gets to benefit from everything that we learn with the hammerhead now the polaris of course is something of a different animal here is one of the original promotional images for the polaris it shows the polaris streaking in at quote unquote high speed attacking presumably a van duel kingship i'm guessing it's on a torpedo run but it has yet to fire its torpedoes now this type of imagery was used a lot while you know showcasing the polaris the the idea that the polaris was quote unquote blazingly fast now that might all be you know comparable to other capital ships and not fighters so i wouldn't expect 1500 meters a second out of this ship though perhaps a healthy 700 to 800 maybe 900 wouldn't be too far from reality and 
even though that may not be as fast as any, many fighters can fly, you do have to remember that there's this little thing called physics and, you know, one of the more hilarious comments that you often saw in the early days of the community was, well, if you get in a big ship, then I'm just going to get in my little fighter and I'm just going to circle strafe you to death and you're never going to hit me. But the problem is, is when both ships are traveling at, you know, 900, 700, maybe even 600 meters a second, the idea of just circle strafing them really doesn't quite pan out. And in fact, technically, it becomes a lot easier for the bigger ship to shoot you down than it is for you to shoot the bigger ship down. So, in a way, that speed advantage that the Polaris supposedly has is something that's really quite attractive about the Polaris. And there's another thing that's actually very attractive about the Polaris as well, especially given recent developments in Star Citizen. The Polaris can carry a fighter. Now, with travel times and certain restrictions on fighters, you know, which are still being worked out, Life for a fighter, especially if you want to travel across an entire star system, is not exactly the most inviting right now. However, the Polaris can carry at least one fighter along with it. And even ships that try to follow along, like if you were to try to bring a fighter along to escort your convoy, the problem is, is that the fighter is going to keep overheating its quantum drive and it's going to be traveling slower in quantum, so that fighter really isn't going to make all that you know, effective of an escort unless you can carry that fighter in quantum with you, which the Polaris can actually do. Now, the idea of a deployable fighter certainly is a great idea, but you know, we're not sure how much larger this landing bay can get. So even though it may be very convenient to carry a slightly larger vessel like a Cutlass Black or an Argo MPUV, we're just not entirely sure that they are going to fit reasonably, possibly the Argo MPUV, but we just don't know. So it may prove to be something that um, only makes the Polaris even better. Even if you don't want to carry a fighter, just to bring along a small ship like that in case you want to go and do a quick FPS mission down on the surface of a planet, but you don't want to bring your whole Corvette all the way down to the surface, you can send that away mission in a little mini shuttle, which certainly would be very interesting. Even more so if you could include the Cutlass Black as being able to dock in there, just saying. And the Polaris also carries enough crew to, you know, populate both vehicles should that become available on a mission though also being able to carry a large crew sometimes means requiring a fairly large crew so that could be a bit of a problem in the future of course the hammerhead is something that is much smaller it's more like uh, a gunboat on steroids and gamma radiation so it's a pretty damn badass gunboat, but it doesn't require a lot of people to crew it out. And that is kind of one strong feature that the Hammerhead has over the Polaris. However, if you're looking at the Hammerhead and you're seeing far more guns, almost as many missiles, easier to crew, cheaper, clearly the Hammerhead is the winner. Not exactly, because... That's where the Polaris comes in and kind of says, hold my beer. The Polaris brings 28 size 10 torpedoes to the battlefield. And that, I mean, against a military capital ship, as they're probably intended to be used, is probably a significant threat against a non-capital ship of a certain size. They could be far more deadly. So ships in that medium range that the Hammerhead may struggle with to a certain extent, the Polaris certainly brings one hell of a big punch to the battlefield. But there is one other critical advantage that the Polaris currently has. By virtue of the fact that the Polaris hasn't been built yet, the Polaris stands to benefit from all the lessons learned in building many of the current ships in Star Citizen. 
It's not exactly a full capital ship, so it may not suffer from many of the atmospheric restrictions in regards to planets that the larger ships do, but it can also benefit from many of the lessons learned in building so many of these ships, not only the Hammerhead. So, in a weird way, the longer it takes to build the Polaris, the longer it takes to get the Polaris started and off the ground, the more the Polaris benefits over time. And if you own a Polaris, you technically have a hammerhead until your Polaris comes out. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, there are some concerns, admittedly, with the Polaris. It's a bigger ship, 50 meters more or less than the hammerhead, though, once again, it has not been built yet. So chances are it's going to be a much more expensive ship to maintain and, you know, much more time intensive to crew. So there are certain things, where, you know, like that, where the hammerhead is definitely going to be in an, at an advantage. It's going to be far more convenient to crew and operate that ship on a regular basis. However, as we explore the game more and as more of the features come online for the game, it may prove that... In the end, the Polaris simply is a much more full-featured and much you know, better thought-out ship than the Hammerhead was ever going to be. So it's unknown exactly how that ball is going to bounce, but with every lesson learned in building the game, you can f pretty much bet that that's going to be factored into the final build of the Polaris whenever we do get it. And that really is kind of the final strike against the Polaris, right? That is kind of what the one thing that you do have to main, you know, kind of maintain some awareness of is when you may be looking at this going, oh, he's making some interesting points about the Polaris. Here's kind of one of the big down points, you know, one of the points that you really may not want to hear if you're a big Polaris fan, which is the Polaris is just not a priority for CIG. If it was, it would already be here. Now, when we first saw it, we thought, oh shit, that's going to be a big deal in Squadron 42. Of course, they're going to rush that out the door. Unfortunately, it seems like that was more the Hammerhead than the Polaris. And despite the Polaris receiving, you know, rave reviews from the community and a lot of people being very excited about it, we really just haven't heard that much of substance other than a few hints that maybe we're putting it in production real soon from CIG. In fact, it has more or less been, for for all that we know, it's been more or less shunted aside. And it's highly doubtful that it's currently some kind of secret project that they're working on in the background. They're just going to dump on and say, oh my god, here's the Polaris. Possible, though highly unlikely. So, if you own a Polaris, yeah, you know what, you do get a hammerhead as a loner, but you may be flying that hammerhead for an awfully long time. And that really is kind of the heart of the issue. It's, you know, one in the hand or two in the bush type thing. On the one hand, you have the hammerhead. And certainly, you know what, yeah, weapon storage and armor storage are a bit of a problem, but you can't just throw it on the floor. You know, I've illustrated that before. You can just throw everything on the floor and just pick it up off the floor. So it's not the end of the world. <laughs> But, you know, it could be somewhat problematic. And you do end up with a very strong, very fun ship to fly that's very competent at certainly doing missions even from the lowest level to the, you know, the mid-level range. Certainly not missions if the Van Duel capital ship in invades the system. You're not like, let's take on that king ship. But it's certainly going to be a very formidable opponent and there are some inconveniences with it, but is it going to be a livable ship? That's what you're going to have to kind of figure out. Now, I hasten to add once again that, you know, even though you may think that this video is anti hammerhead, it is not. The hammerhead is a great ship. The Hammerhead is a fun ship to fly, but there are certain concerns in the future with certain systems coming into the game that may make the Hammerhead more of a headache than a Hammerhead. I think I could have probably played that a little bit better, but so much for wordplay. Anyways, you know, there, you know, there are a lot of things that just no one really knew 
well, except for me, um, when the ship was being built, that were going to become a problem. There were, you know, there were a number of probably corners cut in the production of the ship, or there were resources focused on wasteful projects like the kitchen um, that should have been focused elsewhere. And I think that that ultimately hurt the ship very badly. Will it be able to recover from that? I don't know. Some of it is eye of the beholder stuff. Some of it is all around just bad. The Polaris stands to benefit from all of it. And that's a great thing, but the Polaris doesn't exist. And I don't want to present this video as being one, you know, Polaris good, hammerhead bad, or anything like that. But I wanna, what I want to do is I want to trigger debate. I want to trigger point and counterpoint. I want people to talk about it, and I want to see what other people think, because that's the benefit of creating videos like this, is I get to use all of your feedback and inform my opinion. Unlike some people. Anyways, that's the show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42 development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.